Premiere Pro has released new updates. So I'm gonna be talking about these updates, one of which is really exciting because you no longer need to use LUTs for log footage. And I'll explain that later on. Also, we will be playing around with the new AI art generator called Adobe Firefly. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. So here inside of Premiere Pro, I have this S-Log clip that's from Craig Pruitt's YouTube channel. It's a free clip that he provided because I don't shoot a lot of log. Basically, it's more flat footage that basically preserves more of the highlights and the shadows. So if you wanna do a lot of grading with your footage in post and have more control, it's great to shoot and log. So the current workflow, what you have to do is go up to the Lumetri color panel and you need to put on a LUT to convert it back into the Rec 709 color space. There are some free LUTs that you can download online, but if we undo this now, we no longer have to apply a LUT. What you can do is go up to Premiere Pro, go to Preferences General, and now you can click on Auto Detect Log Video Color Space. And bam, look at that. Now this only applies currently to S-Log, which is Sony Log, V-Log, which is Panasonic, as well as C-Log for Canon. If you're working with a DJI D-Log, it doesn't work yet for that. One more thing, if I bring up the project panel here and right click on this clip, go down to properties, you can see the color space is Sony S-Log 3. If you're downloading log footage, let's say from a stock video site, they may have exported it in a different color space like Rec. 709 already. For example, I downloaded this stock video clip. You can see it right here. It's just this log, a log of a log. When you right click on it and go to properties, you can see that the color space is actually Rec. 709 even though it's still in this milky format. If this is the case, it won't work. If I drag this clip into the timeline, it still looks milky. So to fix that, you can actually right click on this clip, go to modify and interpret footage. And here from color management, click on color space override and change it, for example, to the S-Log3 and press OK. And now it just looks much richer and deeper. So by default, if you go to preferences, general, this auto detect log is by default turned off. So if you want it on, you always have to make sure to check it on and press OK. So the next update is a very simple one, but I think it's really, really smart that they added this. You know how when you would have auto save turned on, the little window would pop up saying that it's auto saving and that would interrupt your workflow, right? Well, now they have it in the background. So if you don't have auto save turned on or know how to do it, go up to Premiere Pro, preferences and go to auto save. So here I have a version saved every two minutes and you can choose how many versions that you want. You can have up to a hundred saved and have it save every two minutes, for example. So this is happening in the background. So this whole time I've been editing, it hasn't come up saying, you know, Premiere Pro's auto saving interrupting my workflow. This is a very basic thing, but I think overall it's one step closer to making Premiere Pro more stable and just, you know, overall flow much nicer. Another very simple update is exporting directly to Adobe Media Encoder. So in the previous workflow, you would go to export and you would choose your presets and your format, and then you'd click on send to Adobe Media Encoder. But now you can be in your current workspace and you can use the shortcut Option Shift M or Alt Shift M if you're on a PC to send this to Adobe Media Encoder and look at that, it's here ready to go and then just hit the green play button to start it. And for those of you that are new to Premiere Pro and you're like, well, why is this special? It's because the exporting can happen in the background and then you can go back to Premiere Pro and continue editing. So that's pretty neat. Another update that has to do with, you know, speeding up Premiere Pro, making it more stable is adding GPU acceleration for a few of their built-in effects. This includes the center split, the split, and the non-additive dissolve. So for example, if you wanted to add a split transition between these two clips, you could drag and drop the split between these two clips, and then you can make this longer. And as we play it back, there is no red bar above, no rendering. It just plays back with a split. 
It's a little bit cheesy of an effect, of course, but if you speed it up for some quick commercial edits, it could be useful for a couple different scenes. The other update is now there is what is called a learn panel. So if you open up the learn panel, I'm actually in it. If you go and search for color, for example, here's a tutorial for me. So you can actually click on this. It will basically walk you through step by step and it provides a color grading footage to follow along to, and it'll tell you what to do so you can learn with me. It's pretty cool that I'm inside of the app. So check out the learn panel. A few other updates that I've talked about because they were in beta before, the automatic tone mapping. Now make sure that the HDR footage displays as SDR in the same timeline. And I made a video about it that you can watch and see it in detail right up here. There's also text-based editing, which is currently available in the public beta. So if you have Adobe Creative Cloud, you can use it. Premiere Pro will auto transcribe all of your clips and you can search for key moments and you can insert that into your timeline and you can edit your video like a text document. Click up here to see how that works. And just below I put a link to the release notes because there are a few more updates that you can read about that might be useful to you and uh yeah. All right so next we're going to test Adobe Firefly to see how the AI works with their art generation. But first if this video is helping you out do me a favor and give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. So if you've been watching my channel now for a while, you know that I use Envato Elements all of the time to get stock video and lots of templates for my tutorials on YouTube. And I think my favorite part about it is that I can download as much as I need to to test it out and use it in any number of projects, which is just great. So for example, here in stock video, I can search for ungraded. So if you want to get some more log footage, you can check out some of their stock video clips here and you can download them directly to your drive. There's also templates as well. And I actually found these really nice wedding title mogurts, which actually reminded me of an update in Premiere Pro, which has to do with mogurts. Here are the titles that I downloaded. They are .mogrt mogurt files motion graphics templates. If you're new to motion graphics templates, you might think, oh, I'm just going to press shift and select all of them and drag them into my project panel. Well, actually dragging it into the project panel isn't correct. Before it would say like unsupported file type, but now they just created this new thing saying motion graphics templates cannot be imported into the project panel. We have installed your motion graphics templates in the essential graphics panel instead. From there, you can drag and drop them into your timeline. So I'm gonna click on do not show again and press okay. And now from essential graphics, you can see they've all been imported here for us. And if we go back to this wedding clip from Craig, we can take one of these and drag and drop it on top of our clip. And if we select this, then from essential graphics, we can update uh, the font, for example, to a nice handwritten font, and we can resize it, make it a little bit bigger. And this is just one example of the mogurts you can get from Elements, and mogurts are a lot faster now. They used to kind of suck. So if you'd like to try out Elements, you can use my link below. You can see I have a landing page that gives you 70% off your first month to try it out. Thanks so much to Elements for supporting the channel and sponsoring today's video. And now let's go check out Adobe Firefly. So Adobe Firefly, if you don't know what it is, it's a new AI art generator that was created by Adobe. And it's currently in beta, but you need to request to be a part of it. And once you get into the page, you can see that currently available is text to image and text effects. Now text image, you've probably are familiar with it from the other AI tools. As we scroll down, you can see that they're coming soon in exploration is in painting to remove objects from images, text to vector. All of these are design related. There's nothing related to video yet. Actually, while editing this, Adobe announced plans to expand Firefly into video. Here's a preview.
the first two that we can try out here is text to image. So on this new page, you can scroll down to explore all the different types of art pieces that have been created with Firefly. Now, all of this is great and all, but you know, creating these pieces of art, you know, for me, if I was gonna create something, it would be to be a part of something else. You know, if I just made something with a text prompt, I'm not gonna be really proud of it, right? Because AI did it. I may have gotten clever with my text prompt, but I thought it would be cool to use text to image to create images that I would wanna use in something else. For example, if I needed a particular image for a thumbnail project I'm working on. So one idea that I came up with was for a recent thumbnail, I wanted an outer space scene. So let's go ahead and type in outer space scene with a big planet and blue highlights. All right, so here are the scenes that it generated and you can see on the right, there's some really handy tools that are really user friendly. So from aspect ratio, let's say I want it to be widescreen for my thumbnail and it will update to this aspect ratio. Look at that, it looks sweet. If you want it to look more realistic, we can choose photo and here are some nice results. And then you can play around with different styles, of course. There is different types of effects bokeh effect, neon, different things like that. So any of these you can download. For example, this one you can click download and it will download, of course, with the Adobe Firefly credentials here because this is in beta, so you can't use it for commercial use right now. So I'm going to take this photo that we generated from AI and drag it here into my artboard. And I'm going to pull it in the background, resize it and make it bigger and I'll add a color overlay on top and press OK. So this is what I think is so cool about AI art is I'm able to say, oh, I really want this cool outer space scene behind this photo. I can't find what I need. For example, let's go and let's generate an image and let's drag and drop it here. So I think this is a really cool way of finding something fast that you need and I think even cooler if that could be video, right? If you need a particular shot of something, just type in a text prompt and AI will generate it for you. All right, so now let's try to generate this gal neon sign right behind me here. Neon letters, gal inside a pink neon square. All right, look at this one. This one's pretty cool. I don't know why it chose gale or glow, but this one, I mean, hey, if I needed a quick render of the neon sign, I don't know, for a social media banner, it can generate that for you. How cool is that? Let's go to text effects. So here you can apply styles to text. So like really cool font effects. Let's try fiber optic cables. And let's try a different font change to Cooper. A few moments later. I think this is really cool. So let's type in another word. There's something that I say all the time, jump on in in the beginning of my videos. And I don't know, I just really like cables. We deal with cables all the time as video people. Maybe not fiber optic, but of course we can try, for example, audio cables. And you'll notice there's a little bit of stragglers hanging out. You can click on tight and that will remove the kind of straggly wires that are hanging off of the font and it will make it more of a clean edit. I think this is super cool. So I'm gonna download it for reference just to have for the future. So definitely apply for the beta and try it out. I think that it's really cool to utilize AI to help us generate things that would maybe take us hours to do or to find, but I wouldn't just use it to like generate a piece of art and say, oh, I made this piece of art. Instead, I like to see it as a utility to help us get something done faster, to find that asset that we need to then put it within an art project that we're working on. So those are the most exciting updates right now that are happening in Adobe, at least in the Premiere Pro space and in the AI space, which is something that I'm very excited about. So if you have any questions, you know, per usual leave a comment below and yeah i'll be seeing you soon in another video here and as always keep creating better video with gal bye Whoop.